Periodically, over the past several decades, we've heard of situations when the U.S. government has experimented on human beings. Some cases have involved nuclear weapons, others, LSD, and mind control. So is it possible something similar could happen to us right now without our knowledge? In tonight's special assignment, Ross Blackstone introduces us to Northern Californians who say it is and that they have proof. Imagine everywhere you go, someone is watching, reading your thoughts, controlling your mind. They know what you do inside your house, which you're being monitored in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. At the state capitol last summer, Mary Ann Stratton rallied with dozens of other Californians who say it's happening to them through ultra-frequency radio waves. I can be in a, in a room full of, of a thousand people, but it'll only affect me. They believe the government is sending radio waves to directly affect the unique electromagnetic waves in their brains. That way it can control their thoughts and bodies. Pain is unbelievable, okay? And not enough to pass, make you pass out. If you've ever broken any, a bone, you want to know what pain, a bone, you want to know what pain, bone, you want to know what pain. Kinda, did you see how she stumbled there? After our interview, Stratton said the government made her throat swell so she would have trouble talking to us. And it's electronic harassment, but it seems as when you become actively involved with disclosing this information, it becomes torture. They believe the government is testing mind control tactics to use in war, and anyone could be targeted. Some are uneducated people with no ties. Others have information the government wants to monitor. It could be because of law enforcement. It could be because you're a whistleblower. It could be because you were in the Army, Navy. And they say there's nothing you can do to protect yourself. They also claim minds are controlled different ways. Cheryl Welsh says the government uses radio waves to affect other people around her so as to study her mental reactions. Wherever I go about in my day, people will spit, swear, blow smoke in my face, basically a hundred insults a day. Sounds far-fetched? Well, don't make up your mind just yet. Some say they have research going back more than 40 years, which says it's possible. I've got the documents from NASA, from uh, Federal Times, from back in the 70s, the DIA, talking about how they were going to use this microwave hearing to, make, to drive political targets crazy. Welsh is also a law student at Lincoln. Through her organization, Citizens Against Human Rights Abuse, she shared documents she's gathered with hundreds of people around the world. Documents like this from the United Nations. It talks about the electromagnetic weapons and the Russians wanted to ban the weapons. And Welsh is not the only one. In his latest book, Earth Rising, renowned author and speaker Nick Begich cites more than 30 patents that show mind control is possible by using light, sound, or electronic fields. As long as the pulse rate um, is, is correct and, and hits a window frequency. He uses an example from 1997, when more than 600 Japanese children went into epileptic seizures while watching a cartoon, which flashed a light at a certain rate. Similarly, he says if a radio wave is sent at the right frequency to an acupuncture point on the skin, it will translate into an auditory signal that is sent directly to the brain. Begich used this infrasound device to demonstrate on me. I can hear it when you press it to my skin, but not when you take it off. Right. So that's sending the signal through my skin. Through your nervous system, right into the brain, and the brain is decoding it. And so it's almost like it's right in the center of your head. And you can do that even if it, you weren't touching my skin? Not with this device, but if I were using a microwave carrier at a distance, we could achieve the same thing. He says the sound could then be used to control my behavior, and the waves can be sent through any energy source, radio towers, indoor lights, especially the internet. It would be difficult to target specific people like Orr, Stratton, or Welsh. But to target an individual, um, you really need some line of sight, and you'd need to use something like a microwave carrier. But he says people can be controlled in mass. The question then is, has the government used the technology? Begich says yes. He believes the U.S. sent anxiety signals to get Iraqis to surrender during the Gulf War. And they said, well, it was going to be bombarded them so heavily. That was the American story. 
You know, look at Dresden, Germany, London during World War II. I mean, that doesn't drive people out. And most Americans have heard how the CIA has used LSD to control minds. Secretary of Energy O'Leary has acknowledged half a million people have been experimented on in some form in the U.S. without their permission. Could it happen again? We're in uh, the beginning of a new millennium. And believe me, the stuff that's happened in the past is happening again. Begich says the technology is not extremely advanced. If the military can figure it out, individuals can too. Once that happens, advertisers, politicians, terrorists, anyone could have the ability to control your mind. On special assignment, I'm Ross Blackstone for KOVR 13 News. Hmm. Well, Nick Begich has been able to convince the European Parliament to call for a ban in the beginning of treaty dialogue for anything that can manipulate human behavior. Still, the U.S. denies the technology. And if American scientists talk about their work, they will be held for treason. But Begich says many former Soviet scientists who experimented with the technology during the Cold War are now going public because of a lack of funding.